Remember when React patched fetch and everyone got really mad at them? So mad that as of a couple days ago, they reverted the change? Well, it looks like they're doing it again. And just like last time, I think it's a good idea. And I hope you guys do too, because this will be a very nice change. And this change is to a thing that we all love to hate, date. Why would React patch date? One simple reason that we're going to go into insane depth in. Hydration errors. Yes. Hydration errors, the thing that everybody loves to complain about, but not that many people have, tend to have the same root cause. And it seems like the React teams found a good way to solve it. Thank you, as always, to Andrew for tweeting a thread about this so we actually have something to talk about. In a future React release, it's likely we'll patch the date API during SSR and hydration to prevent mismatches. I expect this to be controversial because people have convinced themselves that patching is automatically bad, sharing this now to provoke you rather than later. Very fair point. Very fair point. People get really mad at the idea of patching. He is a bit more in depth, so let's see what he has to say before I go on my rant. Patching built-in APIs is fine if the patch behavior is standards compliant. Nobody finds polyfills controversial, for example. Very fair point. Not only do we will not find polyfills controversial, they often use polyfills for behavior the browser already supports. So like if your browser has like dot two string on all the stuff that you want, or it has array sort methods or string replace all, you don't need to polyfill it. But a lot of people still do because their build tools do it and they want it to work on Internet Explorer. So they just throw everything in. We've done this for so long that like frameworks just do it for you automatically. We don't even think about it or talk about it anymore. The classic anti-patching parable is Smooshgate, but that was about non-standard methods polluting the global namespace. The mechanism is the same, but the implications are much different. We should talk about Smooshgate so people can understand what that is. Smooshgate was a classic issue that happened because of a certain library named MooTools. MooTools was used for a lot of websites back in the day. It was in the like jQuery era. And one of the things it did was patch array. It would adjust the array built in in the browser so that it would have additional behaviors that you might want. A proposal for a JavaScript language feature called array.prototype.flatten turned out to be web incompatible. Shipping this feature in Firefox Nightly has caused at least one popular website to break. Given that the problematic code is part of the widespread MooTools library, it's likely that many more websites are affected. So yeah, here's the problem. The Proposal author jokingly suggested renaming Flatten to Smoosh to avoid the compatibility issue. The joke was not clear to everyone, so some people started to incorrectly believe that the new name had already been decided, and then things escalated quickly. Since Mutuals added this on the array object that is a global, future implementations, and specifically future browser changes, can't overuse that name or reuse it because it might break things. And one of the big things they push for in the web is to not make changes that break existing websites. It's been like the main key part of how the web works and it has its problems. Like we went through the strict era with JavaScript because of how bad old JS behaviors were, but we're still gonna be running into shit like this probably forever. The patch fetch behavior in Next is controversial, but that's because the caching behavior itself is confusing. Woof, spoken better than I ever could. If you haven't already seen the video where I talk about this, it should be out by now, check it out. Not the patching per se. If Next implemented the same behavior via a service worker, it would still be controversial. Funny enough, they have a plan to make this better. I'm still very excited to see how they solve the fetch problem in the caching layer in Next. The education for Next's caching is the biggest problem. Just teaching it and understanding it is so difficult that I struggle to explain it to others. They need to figure that out and they probably need much better dev tools to show you as you're working on it, but they don't have that, so it sucks. I also have the hot take that like fetch on the server is still a very new thing like only recently was in dc added as the official fetch inside of node projects for a long time we've used a package called node fetch that was an okay implementation that felt a little bit like fetch on the server side there was no server side fetch and that's also an important note here. React's patches aren't to client-side JavaScript. They're not changing the code that goes to the browser. They're not adding these polyfills to the browser. They're just adjusting behavior on the server to better meet our expectations as developers and to have better default behaviors that work well for us. And dates are one of the worst offenders of this type of problem. Let me do a quick demo. Const now equals new date. Cool. It is currently cool. And now bun dev should get us here. It is currently 5 1 2024, 2 37, 24 p.m. If we go to console, no issues because right now the server and the client are running in the same time zone. But let's say my server was located somewhere else. Then these things can start to break. Actually, since this isn't a client component, it won't. But if I do use client, where now this code's gonna run on the client side, we're gonna start getting errors. 
The reason that we're getting these errors is because the client side and the server side are generating different results because the server side is generating this time and then the client side regenerates it because it's calling the new date again, but the client side is now going to get a different time. The reason is because this code, this new date code gets run twice. This might be a little easier to understand. If I do function get time console.log, we got a new time now dot to locale string. And then we'll use this instead. If we don't have use client here and I run this, we don't get anything in the console because this code isn't running on the client. It's only running on the server. And if we go here, we see that we got a new time. But if I go add back the use client, this code now runs on client and on server. So we see we got a new time here as well as here. But if I refresh this, we're going to get a hydration error because the time this got is 238.56. The time this got is 238.55. This sucks. This sucks for a ton of reasons. Now imagine that the server and the client are in different time zones and the locale time call that you made here generates a time for UTC or a time for East Coast or a time for India and your user is somewhere else. The result of this code is going to be different. That sucks. That sucks really hard and it's really confusing to debug. The vast majority of the time I've had or seen others have a hydration issue in React, which by the way, if you don't know what a hydration issue is, I should probably explain that quick. Hydration is when you have HTML that the server gave you, and then your client-side framework like React reruns the code it needs to, to attach the React JavaScript code to the element. So if we also add in a quick like counter component, function counter, God bless Supermaven for making this take literal seconds to do. And now I can drop this underneath here. We obviously need this code to run on the client, but the server is generating this component still. It's generating the HTML. If we go to the network tab and we look at the HTML that we got from the server, that's not going to be the way to do that. I am silly. Uh, response. Copy this, drop it here. Here's the HTML we get back from our server. It actually includes all of this stuff. It has the main, it has the time div, and then it has this div, which is the one that is bound to the click. So how does React know which div is the right one here if it's getting this HTML? Previously, before something like Next or server components, your HTML would just not include these parts. It would just be your skeleton. And then React would run and add all of those parts on the inside. Since we now run the React code on the server to generate HTML, the hydration step is how the React code gets bound to these elements. And it does it by just rerunning the whole thing. By recreating the top level main tag and then creating this counter tag, it knows what the output looks like and it's matching that output to the code that is right here. The issue is when this HTML is different from what React generates on the client. So if this React code generates a different thing than this React code does, you get an error. This is a problem because date times specifically are going to spit out different results on the server than they do on the client, which is surprisingly common. This problem exists because we're running this code in both places because we need to run on the server to generate the right HTML and we need to run it on the client to make sure that the code is up to date and all of the elements are attached properly. The fix that I have tended to rely on is to not do this code in both places. Rather than having the get time function run on server and client, I would do something like making a counter.tsx component, move over this guy, move over this too. And since this is use client, but this isn't, this will now work without a hydration error. We go back to the console, no hydration error, because this code that generates this is no longer on the client. In fact, if we were to redefine this part, we'll just throw this in counter because it's easier. Export function uh, content return div. We don't have get time in here. And as I said, we don't want to run this function here. So instead, we're going to do props content string and we'll render props.content. So now we'll do content, import that instead. And this will also do the same thing because even though this client component is the one getting the result, the server is passing this value, this string that is generated to the content element that is a client component, which means that that code, this get time function only ever runs in this server component file. So you never get a different result on the client because this code only runs once on the server. These have been the solutions for a while, but wouldn't it be nice if the date helpers in like the date function in your React code didn't have these edge cases where you had to restructure your app a little bit in order to pass the right thing around. I did see that we had a response from uh, somebody from the Marco team who uh, love Marco, love the guys working on it, love Dylan, great developers. That's the team that Ryan Carniato from Solid used to work on, believe it or not. 
there's a lot of really, really good work being done by these guys. But their, their push for resumability is a little frustrating. If you don't know what resumability is, it's the alternative to hydration, where instead of having your HTML get linked to your JavaScript code by rerunning it, you'd leave little helpers in here, like ID equals like index page main seven dot whatever. And these identifiers are used in order for the code here to know what it's linking to. It's a much more direct way. And the result is HTML that has a lot more stuff in it. You can check out how quick used to work and even how quick to works if you're curious about how that stuff behaves. The goal of this is such that you don't have to rerun the React code on the server and on the client because it just knows how to link things. You still end up with a lot of these problems though. If any of these links go stale or the expectation that the JavaScript code has is different from what's in the HTML, not hydrating gives you a separate set of similar issues. I don't think it's fair to say you need resumability just because date time is confusing when you run date time in two places. I I think this is fine. I actually am quite fond of the idea of solving this at like the date time level. People are going to be upset. What would the patch actually do? During hydration, instead of returning the browser's current time, it would return the time that was used during SSR so that they're the same. Oh, hmm. During, if it's always returning the time from SSR, I guess that works. But this is doing something I didn't think it was doing that I'm a little scared of, which is that it's patching how date works on the client side, which is misleading from what was said here. They patched the date API during SSR, okay, and hydration. I guess the and hydration part makes sense, but that still feels a bit weird. Yeah, I have feelings. The, the use case I see this fixing would be, okay, let's go to content. Instead of this using counter, we're gonna do something a little different here. We're gonna have const current set current props.content. Is that an autocomplete? That's actually good. Okay, not quite. We can go with it. Set current. This would be uh, new date dot to local string. I don't want to say clicks. I want that to say current time. And now uh, when you click this, it's going to update to the, the new current time. So we get this one from the server. And when we click, it updates to the new one on the client. The issue here is that Right now, when we pass that, it's fine. But if I change this to be new date dot to locale string, we're going to get the hydration error again because the server and the client are getting different results because this component is generating HTML on the server and then it gets rerun on the client where the result of this is different. Uh, that being fixed is nice, but it does feel a bit weird that on the hydration pass, date does something different. I'm a little scared to see what that polyfill looks like. My hope was that they had done something the other way, which is almost like prevent date from being called or using data that they have from the network request in order to bake in date properly. So I'm curious how this ends up being implemented and working. I am happy that they're going after date because I firmly agree that date is where most of the issues people have with hydration errors are coming from. I am very curious how they end up implementing this, but I do have high hopes. Maybe, just maybe, people will stop complaining about hydration errors when the most common one goes away. Let me know what you guys think. And if you have hydration errors that aren't related to date time, let me know because I don't see a lot of those and I'm actually really curious. Until next time, peace nerds.